this love. Yeah, I gotta keep it trendy on my soul. I'm the most selfish person that I know. Here we go down the rabbit hole. Got a couple carrots from my neck. And we are live. Welcome back to Mescal and Moguls. It's your boy, the one with Scarface. Your boy, Scarface. And today we're bringing you another episode. But first of all, I want to thank you guys for voting for us for the best podcast. Uh, the Reader's Choice, as you can see right here. Uh, I'm showing it for the people that are listening. I'm showing uh, the, the 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 award. So I, I won best podcast of the year and also best photographer of the year. So again, I want to thank you guys for everyone who's been voting for us. You know, you, I truly do appreciate it. Couldn't have done this without you guys. And right now I'm also voted for best local or best uh, photographer as well on a different thing. So if you guys can go vote for me there, I would truly do appreciate it. But again, thank you guys. Like I seriously, it means a lot that you guys were sitting there voting for me. Um, and in order to win these, which, you know, I'm extremely grateful for, you know, cause you guys are awesome. You guys are amazing. You guys voted every day for like a while, even though I was bugging on my Instagram. So if you guys haven't followed my Instagram, definitely should go follow my Instagram. Okay. I don't always just spam stuff on there. I say some weird shit on there, to be honest. But anyways, thank you guys again. Uh, and if you guys can, can leave us a review on if you guys are listening on Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever you're listening to YouTube, leave a comment, leave a thumbs up. It would truly do like it helps out a lot. It helps the podcast out a lot. So if you guys can, please do. Uh, and also shout out to everybody who keeps uh, donating every month. You know, if you go, go to, uh, it's like podcast. If you go to the straight direct to the podcast, uh, homepage, you can sign up right there to donate every month. You know, shout out to everybody who's been donating. I truly do appreciate it. It helps with the podcast, you know, being able to get better equipment and so on and so forth. So I can keep doing stuff for you and I'm going to start doing some giveaways too. So, you know, and if you guys also want to help out, we do have this brand called Prolific. It's hat pins. I wear these all the time. So we have a straight razor right here. We have a baseball one that uh, says dingers on it. And we have a sleeping Goku. Everything is linked in the bio. Go and check it out. Shout out to everyone who has purchased them and, uh, you know, helps out the podcast any way they can. But anyways, today I wanted to get into a little topic that, you know, I, I get a lot of questions on uh, over on like the TikTok. You know, shout out to everybody who's been following us on TikTok and one of the common things that people always ask is the ghosting part, you know. And um, so I wanted to go over, you know, some reasons why ghosting is bad. So if you've ghosted a person if, or if if you've been ghosted, you know, hopefully they listen to this. This th That way they can see why it was bad that, you know, what they did. It's not, it doesn't do anything for that person. You know, you just avoid that awkward conversation, okay. So for those that don't know, ghosting, which refers to abruptly cutting off all communication with someone without explanation or warning, is generally generally considered a disrespectful or harmful behavior. Here are a few reasons why ghosting is often regarded as bad. You know, and again, everyone has, you know, I'm sure almost everybody has gone through some sort of issue of ghosting. So it's not healthy for you or the person you're ghosting because, you know, it leaves them with a lot of questions. You know, if you're not really into the person, just let them know, you know, be straight up forward. I would rather someone be straightforward with me than uh, than not. And then eventually just cut communications. OK, you know, again, I've done it before, too. OK, don't come after me. I know people are going to be like, well, you've done it, too, before. OK, I know, you know, I'm working on it as well, just like everybody else, because I'm learning that it does more damage than anything. And it helps me with my communication skills and my um uh, in order to be the best person I can be possibly. OK, so the first reason why it's bad is uh, lack of closure. Ghost ghosting denies the other person the opportunity for closure or understanding by abruptly disappearing for someone's life without any explanation. You leave them confused, hurt and questioning what went wrong. This can lead to feelings of self-doubt, anxiety and emotional distress for the person being ghosted. And that's one of the main common ones is because some people want to know why you know was it something they did was it something they said was it somebody else um even if it's somebody else you can just be straight up honest be like yo i'm not really feeling it. or i found somebody else that's you know i vibe with a little bit more uh yes it's gonna suck telling them that trust me it's not easy telling somebody like <laughs> uh why you're ghosting them or why you're not gonna talk to them anymore but the worst thing you can do is not say anything at all, you know, not saying anything at all, I think is worse because it leaves people wondering, you know, and, and it's always your own mind, your own mind that eats you up. You know what I mean? Like you're constantly overthinking things. That's how I am. I overthink everything. And it's something that I have been working on. Trust me. Like I'm, I'm trying to get a lot better with that. Um, 
because I start overthinking every situation, like every which way it can go wrong, basically. So, uh, um, but just like some people need that closure. Some people need to know why, you know, and again, it's not going to be an easy conversation with whoever you're talking to or why ever, whomever you're going to tell that, that you don't want to talk to them anymore. It's going to be an awkward conversation. It's going to be a hard, it's going to be a difficult conversation, but it's also going to help you grow as a person and become a better person overall. So that's why I always say, like, try to at least, you know, give them some sort of closure, you know, uh, and it's going to help you, like I said, become a better person. I'm trying to be like that myself because, again, I've done it before. I've just ghosted people just because, and it's been mainly because I just wasn't feeling them. Um, I just wasn't vibing with them. Maybe I found somebody different. Maybe they were, I was just there for the good time and nothing else. So, you know, there's, there's a bunch of different reasons why somebody would ghost, but it's always, something always happened and it's never what they come back with an excuse. You know, some people, Oh, this happened and this happened. Okay. If that happened, whoever you were were talking to, you could have been like, yo, I'm going through this real quick or right now. I'm not going to be as talkative, just a, just a heads up or something like that, you know, uh, something along those lines. Like it doesn't necessarily have to be like, uh, you know, cause everybody goes through something. So everybody always goes through something at a different period of their life. Um, everybody has their ups and downs, but if you're talking to somebody and they actually want you around in their life, they're going to tell you, or they're going to, uh, let you know why they're not going to be as talkative like over a period of time or anything like that. So that's a big, 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 big uh, uh, red flag. If they just completely ghost you and then come back and they say, so-and-so happened. Okay. No, no, not at all. All right. So the next one that we do have is disrespectful communication. Ghosting is a form of passive communication that demonstrates a lack of respect for the other person's feelings. It disregards the basic principles of open and honest communication that are essential for a healthy relationship by avoiding difficult conversations, confrontations, you fall to, you fail to address any concerns or conflicts that may have arisen, which are, which can hinder personal growth and relationship development. And that is very true. That's why I'm also trying to become better at these things, trying to talk more about these things, because at the end of the day, it is disrespectful just to completely cut them off. You're doing all this work to try to get their attention and so on and so forth. But then out of nowhere, you just cut them off and they have absolutely no idea or maybe they have a small idea, but they just need to know why, like what happened, what happened. And sometimes that person starts blaming themselves or saying like, you know, that uh, what did they do wrong? You know, like they're, they're a bad person that way. That's why the person left and so on and so forth. And this helps you like with your relationship, relationship skills as well, like having these awkward conversations, having these uh, talks with whoever you're talking to. And, and if you're not feeling them, it's, it's better to have that conversation, you know, uh, or if there's something that is bothering you, bring up that conversation. The longer you wait, the longer, the more, the bigger the problem is going to be. You know, if you bring it up early in the beginning, some people are like, Oh, I'm going to sound clean. No, like if it's bugging you, tell them, you know, that way they fix it. If I'm really feeling somebody and I, I do something that bugs them, and if they tell me right away, guess what? I'm going to fix it because uh, I like that person, you know, if, over a period of time. Then finally, like later on, and you're like, oh, this bugs me. You're like, well, it never bugged you before. You know, we've all heard that, right? You're like, it never bugged you before. Why, why does it bug you now? So that's why I say, like, bring up these conversations beforehand. Like, don't don't wait until um, it's the last it's happened for months, for years, you know, bring up those conversations because if this person really wants to be with you, they're going to try to fix those situations. They're going to try to make that situation a lot better uh, because they want to be with you, you know, so make sure you guys fix those in the beginning. Uh, Make sure it is very disrespectful for the person. If you don't, I'm pretty sure like if you ghosted somebody, you wouldn't want to be ghosted. Right. And luckily it's never happened to me that I can remember. You know, it's never happened to me where the girl just like cut me off. Uh, Not that I can remember. Okay. Uh, Maybe it has. I don't don't know. I can't remember. But I think if it had, it probably would have affected me a certain way. But it does affect people. You know what I mean? Like it does. uh, I know some people who've gotten ghosted and they're like, oh, like, why would he do that? Like, 
you know, what, what is the reasoning behind it? And it's, you know, fellas, you guys put these girls through all this, like these, uh, issues, meaning like, um, first of all, it's disrespectful. Second, like a lot of girls like to have good communication, closure. And if you don't tell them why you don't want to talk, they're going to continue thinking like, what do they do? You know, who? And they're gonna, it's going to be worse off later on. And it's going to be worse off for you as the guy that goes to the girl because now that's that's your your plan right there. Instantly goes to the next person and goes and goes and goes. Once you're not feeling somebody, goes. No. Instead of having those conversations where you're just like, yeah, you know what? Not really feeling this. Uh, at least we tried, so on and so forth. So ghosting, let's, you know, let's try to be a little bit more respectful because, again, you wouldn't want – that a girl to ghost you and vice versa. A girl doesn't want a guy to ghost them. So let's have those conversations instead of just like ghosting. The more you can have these conversations, even like guys who really are the ones that don't have these conversations, they'll become better at having these conversations. If you have that conversation with them, okay? Uh, I'm getting better at it. Trust me. Again, I am not perfect. I never come try to come across here that I am perfect. I have my flaws. I have my things that I do. Uh, I am not perfect. And so ghosting is something that I definitely do not want to be doing anymore. Uh, so like if I'm not feeling somebody, I'm going to tell them straight up. And even if it hurts their feelings or I get a negative reaction, uh, I know I'll feel better having that conversation and letting them know why instead of just like cutting them off, you know, because uh, I've done that again. I've done it plenty of times and I'm sure it's really messed up the other person. And if you're listening to this and I ever ghosted you, I am sorry. You know, um, we learn, you know, I know some people are going to be like, we don't give a fuck about your apology. I know, I know. It was an asshole move of me to to just ghost people. And again, I'm trying to be better at that just because I would not want to be ghosted. And I, I wouldn't want anybody like people that I know be ghosted because I'm sure it sucks because I, like I said, I've, I've talked to people who've been ghosted and they're, it go, it's, it's a roller coaster of emotions. Okay. Like it's, it's not good. That's another reason why I was like, I can't be doing that. Cause like, what if I'm, what if I'm putting these girls through that type of situation too, you know? So, uh, we definitely can't have that. All right. So the next one that we have is emotional impact. Being ghosted can have a significant emotional consequences. It can make that person feel rejected, unworthy, and unimportant. Ghosting can also damage their trust in others, making it harder for them to be in new relationships in the future. It can lead to feelings of abandonment and negatively affect their self-esteem. And this is what we're talking about. Like this puts like a, the girl through the whole roller coaster of emotions. Even guys. I'm sure it happens to guys too. I'm not just saying it's just girls. Um, you know, it, it can affect them because a lot of people will start blaming themselves that they did something. It was something that they did. Even though they did everything right, you know. Uh, it just could be that that person was not for them, you know, and it happens. Don't like it happens. You don't have to, um, the, the person that you start talking to or you start meeting or anything like that may not be the person you're going to end up with, you know, but at least you guys try, you know, at least you guys tried. Uh, and, but instead of just like not having the awkward conversation because that one of the person, like one of the two are going to have, uh, are going to be in it differently. Meaning like, some person might be in it a little bit more than the other person. So if you don't have this conversation, now that person is going to start like blaming themselves, being like, oh, like nobody's ever going to want me and so on and so forth, you know, and, and things like that. So that's why it's it's good to have the conversations. That way you can figure out, you know, what happened or what's going on. And guys, you got to be honest. If there's another girl, just tell her there's another girl, man. Like that's all you got to do instead of, uh, instead of just ghosting your going with this girl because eventually the word's going to get out that you're talking to this other girl and then all now it's just even more awkward because like what if you run into that person <laughs> like in actual real life you know so let's not put there's already a lot of mental health issues going around everybody's struggling with some sort of mental health issues why are you going to continue to add to it you know so instead of continuing to add let's let's try to help people you know the only way we're going to become better is like is um, having these conversations, you know, letting people know why we're not going to mess with them anymore or why it's just not working out. Maybe you just, there's no feelings for you. There's no spark. There's no nothing there. So you just want to be like, you know what? Like, I'm not really feeling anything, you know, and I don't want to drag you along. You know, you might feel something, but I like, 
You know what I mean? Like sometimes it doesn't go both ways and that's okay. But have that conversation instead of having that person go through all these emotions, you know, start blaming themselves. And then later on, like when somebody else wants to date or say you're the person trying to date that person, you could have been like, man, I wish the guy before this would have just like been straight up. Cause now she's like, which is good too. Like the girl becomes overly protective, keeps her guard up, makes sure like she knows what she wants and so on and so forth. So, I mean, it has its pros and its cons. Cause sometimes you have to go through some negative shit in order to become a better person and learn those lessons that what you're not going to accept the boundaries you're going to set you know and things like that so sometimes it's good to go through some of those things but if we don't have to because like i said breakups suck ghosting sucks you know like all these suck i have never met somebody that oh yeah i feel amazing now that we broke up uh and what i mean because like at that time yes some people do feel amazing when they actually finally separate but they felt that breakup stage earlier on like when they were still in the relationship if, if that makes sense you know they went through he uh the guy or the girl went through those emotions way before they actually separated separated you know so that's what i mean like those breakups they suck you know the just the feelings that it just it just sucks overall you guys have been through them i've been through them it, they fucking suck okay but you know that's what i mean like they'll go through that and then they'll finally separate so some people were like no i was glad when i separated yeah you were glad when you finally separated but there was that point in time where you're actually were separating from that person, you know, like things weren't working out. You're going through that whole roller coaster of emotions. So, all right. So the next one that we do have is breakdown of trust. Ghosting erodes trust between individuals. When someone is ghosted, it can create a sense of betrayal and making it challenging to trust others in the future relationships. It sends a message that that person doing the ghosting is not willing to address the problem or communicate openly, which can be detrimental to building healthy and meaningful connections. And I think that's what a lot of people lag right now is like building those connections, you know, or putting, being able to build those connections with that person. Meaning like if you're able to have these communicate, like open talks with whoever you talk, whoever you're with talking to and stuff like that, you guys can get, figure out problems a lot easier uh, compromise on things a lot easier. Um, or like before it, it just ghosting. It's that's the, it's the easiest cop out is the easiest cop out. That's why uh, I give the same example. Like, uh, my buddy John, when he was doing the, the, the stairmaster with me one time, I was like, bro, it's so easy to hit that stop button. It's so easy. Everybody's going to hit that stop button. As soon as they feel uncomfortable, they're going to hit stop. All right, I'm done. That was a good workout for me. No, but your body can go way more, way more than you think. You know, uh, it, it just, yes, it's easy to go with somebody, but it's so much harder to have that conversation. But not only are you benefiting from this conversation because you're letting the person know that, you know, what's not working out, but your communication skills are going to become a lot better. You know, you're going to be able to communicate um, to not just whoever you're with, just to everybody. So one thing that I would do a lot before was put myself in awkward conversations, right? Or awkward positions, you know, uncomfortable situations, situations you normally don't put yourself in. You know how sometimes you're like going to do something. You're like, fuck, I can't believe I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Like I should just leave, you know, or I, like I shouldn't do this. I shouldn't do this. This is, you know, very uncomfortable. But then when you do it, you're, uh, uh, Ed Calderon says the best, your, your normal moves meaning like this is your normal now right like this right here this mark this is your normal this is what you do this is what you're comfortable doing but as soon as you do something uncomfortable that normal line moves because now you've done that it's a little bit easier you can probably do it a lot easier and the more uncomfortable things that you do that normal moves so like some things that i do like it seems normal to me i can tell somebody else and they'll be like uh, that's, that's weird. You know, that, I wouldn't do that. Oh no, hell no. I wouldn't do that. You know what I mean? Like there's things like that, but that's because my normal is so far pushed that, you know, I can have conversations with just about anybody. You know, I can hold a conversation with anybody. I can meet somebody and start talking to them and have a good time with them. And, uh, because that's normal. That's why like some people are like, Oh, you're going to go on a date with this person. Aren't you nervous? Nah, you know, of course, there's always that little bit of nerves, but I've never been nervous to like, oh my God, what am I doing? What am I doing? What? Nah, my ass goes in there confident, like, because <laughs> I've done it before, met somebody, a complete stranger online, met him in person, hung out, 
had a great time. Okay. Like I've done it. Some people might find it differently or some, some people might, but just get your normal. That's the biggest thing is just get your normal line pushed, you know, um, stop living in that comfortable area because the more you put yourself in these uncomfortable situations, the, uh, uh kind of situations that you normally don't put yourself in, have these conversations you normally don't have. Trust me, you become a way better person, meaning like your uh, communication skills come a lot better. Your confidence skills become a lot better and you're not and you're willing to do a lot more stuff that you wouldn't do before, you know. So go somewhere by yourself, you know, like things like that. So. All right. And I think this is the biggest one uh, for me is the impact on mental health. Ghosting can have several effects on the mental health, both for the person being ghosted and the ones doing the ghosting. For the person being ghosted, it can result in increased stress, anxiety, and even depression. The uncertainty and unanswered questions can take a toll on their emotional well-being. On the other hand, the person doing the ghosting may experience guilt, shame, or remorse, which can negatively impact their mental health. And see, that's what I mean. Like, it doesn't help the person ghosting and it doesn't help the person getting ghosted because they both come with those feelings. Because trust me, I I felt that (laughs) when I've ghosted uh, girls. Like... It's just that, uh, like, when you stop talking to them, you're like, damn, they're going to think I'm an asshole. People are going to think I'm an asshole. You know, um, maybe I shouldn't have messed around with them like that or put them through all that. You know what I mean? Like, all these things start running through your head and you start feeling like the bad guy. Uh, all because you didn't want to have that conversation with that person and tell them, yo, this this shit's not really working out. I'm not really feeling this. Uh, I really don't want to do this, you know. May it, you know, just the spark isn't there. Cause trust me, I've had, I remember I had a conversation. I was hanging out with this one chick a while back ago and, uh, we went on a few dates and then finally, like, uh, we were scheduling to do another date. And then we basically said, Hey, we're not, I'm not really feeling anything. Like, you know, you're a cool person and so on. And so I was like, girl, I felt the same. You know, I was just like, <laughs> I didn't think it was just me. I was like, maybe it's, it's just me. Maybe there's something wrong with me. Maybe like if we hang out another time, uh, things will be a little different and we did and no no the vibes weren't there at all like at all and so uh, she was great good looking beautiful gorgeous you know it just sometimes like I said you just don't vibe with that person and you know and having that conversation you know helped me a lot because I was like whoo she felt the same way like uh we didn't have to ghost one another we just had that conversation saying that we weren't feeling each other and we went our separate ways and if I were happen to see her I'd be like hey, what's up like how's it going you don't know. I didn't feel bad about it. I'm sure she didn't feel bad about it. I'm sure um, everything was great and dandy afterwards, you know. So uh, that's why, like, I felt so much better having that conversation than not having a conversation. Because when I would do the ghosting, I remember this girl specifically. <laughs> uh, I just wasn't feeling her, you know. I just liked hooking up with her, but then she started getting, like, kind of attached not attached, but she like wanted more, wanted like some sort of relationship. So I just like started backing off a little bit. And then all of a sudden I just like stopped messaging her and she would message me like, Hey, what's up? Did I do something? Like, why aren't you answering? She would try to call me. And I would just ignore everything. Uh, and then I felt like such an asshole. I was like, all because I didn't want to have a conversation. <laughs> uh, I was avoiding her calls, avoiding her messages. I was avoiding everything. Um, until she sent me a long message basically saying like, you know, if I really didn't want to talk to her, I could have just been straight up instead of being like uh, basically a wimp and not having a conversation. That's what it was like. I just I just didn't want to have that conversation. You know, that was an awkward conversation to have. Be like, yo, I'm not really feeling this. I know I put in a lot of effort, but you know what? I thought, you know, things were going to go a little bit different and they didn't. And uh, mainly I just I was just there to hook up, like to be honest, I was just there to hook up. And nothing more. But to tell her that, (laughs) I did not want to do that. You know, so that's why it's so much easier just to have these, hey, you know, I'm not really feeling you. And then because, you know, it's going to lead to more questions. You know why, what happened, what did I do? And then you got to continue having these (laughs) uh, conversations with this person. And you're just like, I really don't want to, like, keep answering these questions. Because sometimes guys feel like or they want it to be almost like a, I'm going to tell you, because it's never like, hey, I'm not really feeling you. Like, we should go our own ways. It's never just like that. It's usually like, well, why? Well, what happened? 
you know, what did I do? Uh, and so on and so forth. You know, it's always something. Uh, that's why, like, some guys avoid having those conversations because they don't want to uh, answer more questions. You know, uh, that was one big th fear of mine is like, ah, shit. I was like, I don't want to answer more questions. You know, like, I know I was like, I, I know the conversation is going to come up of me or like, well, what happened here? What happened now? Like, you know, why was like, you know, it's just like we think that who knows how the conversation would have went. Like if I would have actually just talked to the person, it could have just been like, oh, OK, well, thanks for telling me. I know it sucks and so on and so forth. But, you know, I'm glad we were able to talk about it. Uh Instead of just through my head, I think this is my whole overthinking um, issue that I have too, is like, I'm like, she's going to ask like a follow-up question and there's going to be another follow-up question and then there's going to be another follow-up question. There could be some crying, there could be some, you're a piece of shit. And, and, you know, I started thinking of all this, but who knows how the, those conversations could have went. They could have just went a lot smoother than I thought, you know, uh, I'm, I'm sure the girl would have appreciated it a lot more if I would have had the conversation instead of just being like, I'm not going to talk to him anymore. Um, because like that, like that other experience that I had, like where we just talked about it and we weren't, we weren't really feeling each other and we just went our separate ways. That was so much easier. <laughs> that was so much easier. Like I didn't feel guilty. I didn't feel nothing afterwards. Like I felt like, Hey, like we talked about it, like grown ass adults, we went our own ways and that was it. You know, that was basically it. Some people, um, like myself, will overthink the whole situation thinking that there's going to be like follow-up questions. There's going to be like crying. There's going to be this, this, and that. And there could be, you know, depending on the person, everybody is a little bit different. Everybody could like react to the confrontation a little bit different. And it also depends on how long you've been with that person. Like if you've been with that person for a long time, of course, it's going to be a whole different conversation. There's going to be a lot of crying. There's going to be like this, this, like wanting, uh, answers and closure and then uh but if it's something not that long it shouldn't be that a big of a problem yeah it's it probably suck you know and that's one thing that uh that's why i tell people in the beginning like is not to romanticize whoever you're talking to because if you do trust me that separation is gonna fucking hurt uh i remember this one chick she was uh she she's the one she's one of them that did the one-on-one -on -one, uh uh sit downs with me. You know, if you guys want to do that, I, that I also do that. If you go to my website, you can book that if you want. And, uh, she was just, she hadn't talked to this guy for very long, you know, but then in her head, she had romanticized this person like, Oh, we're going to do this. Oh, we're going to do that. Oh, we're going to be this. We're going to be that. It's going to go great. But then they stopped talking or the guy basically ghosted her and her, she felt like she had broken up, if that makes sense. Like, it felt like it was a long relationship and they had broken up. And that was the whole thing, though. I was like, I was trying to figure out why she was feeling like that. And she basically said, I was like, did you romanticize him in the beginning? I was like, did you think that you guys were going to do this, do that, do this? And she was like, yeah. She's like, I think that's where I made the mistake. So you, now you're thinking like this whole future with this person and you barely even know this person. And so when you guys actually do, like, if it does end or whatever happens, then it feels like a breakup, you know? And it feels probably even worse than a breakup because you're on this high, high horse, right? Everything's going good and great. You can't wait for what the future holds. And all of a sudden he just cuts you off, ghosts you, and then that's it. And you're just like, what the fuck happened? You were up here and you went straight down like a roller coaster, Okay. So that's why I always say, like, also don't romanticize the person just in case that does happen. You know, not everyone's going to be like, oh, OK, I'm going to have a conversation with them. I'm not going to ghost them anymore. You know, uh, I can say that I'm working on ghosting. And <laughs> what happens if I go into a situation where I'm just like, I'm out, you know, again, I'm trying not to do that. So. Um, but everybody is a little bit different. You know, everybody is a little bit different. Some people, some guys might listen to this and be like, you know what, you know, hopefully I'm going to, I'm going to try changing and have these healthier conversations just because it's better for my mental health and it's better for their mental health. Um, because even if you do ghost all that, you thinking that you're not, you're just got out like, like skate free. No, 
you you also go through like little mental things like guilt like i said guilt uh maybe like uh you feel bad for the person you know or you feel bad you feel like a piece of shit too you know for doing that so it it, it just totally depends uh it doesn't help you to ghost that person thinking not having that uh, healthy conversation with that person is going to do anything for you it's actually going to be worse for you what I've noted, like, again, from that experience, like, I had that conversation, like, we weren't feeling each other, and it went great. Meaning, like, of course, you know, it would have been cool if it would have worked out, but we weren't feeling each other. And it was better that we had that conversation instead of me wasting my time, her wasting her time. We just, you know what, it's not working. Cool. Went separate ways, and that was it. Easy as that. No awkward conversation. No, no, like, uh, Cause I've seen her since then, not like dating wise, but I've seen her around since then. And it's never nothing bad, nothing awkward. I'm just, Hey, what's up? That's it. You know, instead of being like, say you're in the same room with somebody you ghosted and now you're just like, ah, oh, shit. Now I gotta like, this is awkward. That person I ghosted is right over there. And like, uh, you know, hopefully they don't make a scene or is it feel, does she feel awkward? Does he feel awkward? You know? And so on. it just, I would rather not feel like that. Uh, so just have those conversations, you know, let's, let's stop, let's ghosting, you know, hopefully, um, I never have to ghost anybody ever again. Uh, and hopefully you never have to ghost anybody and hopefully you don't get ghosted by anybody just because it does suck. And I mean like getting ghosted. Cause I'm sure like just talking with these girls, I'm sure it sucks. You know, again, I don't remember of ever being ghosted like off the top of my head. You, I would think that that would be something that stuck out. I'd, I have been called the rebound, uh, I remember the the girl, she was like, you were just a rebound. I was like, the fuck, me a rebound? And uh, that was funny though. But that, it was like a small little fling thing type of situation. So it really didn't even bug me. I was just like caught off guard being called the rebound. Uh, but let's let's try to have these healthier conversations. Send, send this podcast to, to, to a man, share it and stuff like that. That way you guys can listen to it and also, you know, be open to talk to the, the girl a little bit more because at the end of the day, you're not trying to hook up with your, your, your guy friends. You know, you're trying to hook up with these girls. You're trying to build a relationship with the girl, you know? So why not have these healthy conversations with the girl instead of being like, Oh yeah, straight ghosted her, like trying to brag to a guy or something like that. Be like, ah, stop talking to her, you know? So I think it's easier to do it that way. Uh, and it's better for yourself and it helps you just relieve that stress instead of being like, Oh fuck, you know, um, uh, I wonder what she's doing, like, or if she's, like, upset that I ghosted her. You know, all this stuff runs through her head. So, anyways, I want to thank you guys for checking out another episode. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in every week to the podcast. You know, again, if you guys can vote for the podcast, uh, meaning, not vote, but uh, leave a review. You know, give us a five stars. I try to keep them anywhere from 30 minutes to 35 minutes, 40 minutes, just because anything longer than that. Like, I feel like if you guys are going to work or something like you guys can sit down and listen to Edgar real quick, you know. <laughs> uh, but anything too long, because those are the podcasts that I tend to stick through the whole thing is like something nice and short. There's some of them are like two, three hours and those you have to listen to in sections and then you have to be really interested. Like, say you're listening to a long podcast and all of a sudden, like, you're like, all right, uh, I'll listen to it later. Most of the time, you won't go back to it, you know. So that's why I like to keep them nice and short, have a great conversation with you, especially, like, since I put them out on Monday. Hopefully, it motivates you on Monday, your way to work or anything like that. So, again, thank you, guys. Keep supporting the podcast. Keep supporting the TikToks. Follow me on IG. And uh, I'll catch you guys on the next one. All right. See you guys. Yeah, I gotta keep it trendy on my soul I'm the most selfish person that I know Here we go down the rabbit hole Got a couple carrots from my neck Selfish